Welcome to Ghostly. As always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. Today is our holiday special. Rebecca, did you know that in December the world celebrates many different holidays? Well, I mean, I know there's a few. There like, is There's many. Christmas and New Year's, yeah. Boxing Day in England. Well, that's not really a, like, uh, yeah, no, it's a holiday, but not really religious. it's more like a day off. So we have a very diverse audience, right? Yeah. So I figured we would do this. Okay. Happy St. Nicholas Day. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Immaculate Conception. Happy Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe. Happy Posadas Navidenas. Blessed Yule. Happy Festivus. Merry Christmas. Blessed Zarathos Nodiso. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Feast of the Holy Family. Blessed Holy Innocence Day. Happy Watch Night. And finally, Happy New Year. If we left off one of your holy days, please let us know. Um, But I wanted to do that because when I look at different countries that listen to Ghostly, it's amazing. I mean, seriously, some of these countries I've never even heard of. That's true. Uh, And and I mean, most of our listeners are in the U.S. or Canada, but not all of them. And I know for a fact that we have many different religions that listen to Ghostly. Ghostly. So I'd like Ghostly to be a spot we can all come together and declare our skepticism. Hey, that's <laughs> not right. Okay, well, we can get together to debate our ghost stories. Believing versus skepticism. Yeah, we leave all of the other stuff out. All the politics, all the, you know, all the war, all the other stuff. We just leave that out and we talk about ghost stories. Yes, so, do we have any listener mail? We do. Now, I, you're going to be happy. What? Yeah. I'm never happy. I know. But we actually got some mail that it, it, it supports the, your skeptic side for once. Whoa. I know we never do. Never. No. So I, But I want this to be an inspiration for others. You know, we love your ghost stories. But yes. if you also have some stories that aren't ghost, I mean, they're ghost related. But Yeah, don't just tell us stories I mean, right yeah. like ghost story that turns out not to be a ghost story oh, yes basically i love those yeah those are my favorite <laughs> so this is from rebecca fitzgerald oh another rebecca yes though she spells it in the old-fashioned way oh okay yeah. and you're the new fashion way yes uh okay so she says hi pat and rebecca i'm a big fan of the podcast i have my own interesting experience i want to share with you guys I grew up in a small town in Ontario, Canada. My house wasn't too old, maybe 30 or 40 years old. For as long as I can remember through my teens, I always had weird things happen in my bedroom. My radio would turn itself on as well as my TV, really spooky at 2 a.m. The weirdest thing I would say uh, to happen happened with a lamp I used to own. This lamp was one of those lamps where you touch it and it turns on and has three brightness levels. Oh, I love those lamps. I know, right? I remember those. Then you touch it again and it turns off. I was sitting in my room one day and all of a sudden it turned on. Brightness level one, brightness level two, brightness level three, and then off. Ooh. And it would go through the cycle again and again. It kept doing this until I finally got the courage to get up and unplug the lamp. So I obviously mean, that's a ghost then, right? Well, she said, because up to this point I was staring in disbelief and fear. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously you think ghost. there's a ghost. Ghost, obviously, I mean, right? all of this, very ghost. Mm-hmm, yeah. Clearly ghost. Very ghostly. Yes. <laughs> well, she continues, now, Pat, I know what you're thinking, not a ghost. And after a while, I came to the same conclusion. What? The house has strange electrical wiring. It's really weird, the different rooms on different floors that are connected to each breaker. All the electronics that had things happen to them were plugged into the same outlet at the time of their haunting. Mm. She put that in quotes. So I'm calling this one debunked, but it freaked me out for quite a long time. I'm sure. And I've had a lot of experiences that have freaked me out. And initially I think, well, that has to be something supernatural. And then I take a second and I collect my thoughts and think, well, there is a possibility of something else. You know? Yeah. Well, so. Uh, so she says, love the podcast and keep up the great work. Ah. So well, thank, thank you, you very Rebecca. much. Yeah, yeah. That was really great. So um, so we're going to skip the polls this week because it's Christmas. Uh, and then- no, no, no. We did a poll. We have to give the poll results. People voted. They need to have their voice be heard. 
We just did your skeptic mail. And so now we need to do the poll results. Now, remember, you won last time. I did win so last time. So are you time. sure you don't want to look at the polls? I, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm really scared. <laughs> I mean, the devil baby is pretty persuasive. So mm, let, let's, just, <laughs> let's just do it. All right. So our last episode, we talked about the whole house. And we did not just talk about the devil baby. We also talked about some other ghosts. The question is, whole house haunted? 71% said yes. Oh. 29% said no. You know, I blame this on Mondo. Getting people to believe in that devil baby. I mean, he's very persuasive. Devil baby. (laughs) Or devil baby. (laughs) Put something under the tree for me. I'm sorry. Uh, He is not. I have not been good all year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, I guess it has to be that way. It, you know. Uh, I do want to say that not many people voted. Mm. So if you are a skeptic and you're like, well, how did how did Pat lose? Well, it's because you probably didn't vote. Hey, be nice. There, there was only 34 votes this time. Yeah, we usually have quite a bit more than that. So. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. I don't think that this is a really fair representation of our audience. Hey, the election happens. Yeah. And if how you many- don't come out to vote. How many people did you message to tell them to go vote? No one. Hmm, I, don't, I don't know. I don't need to. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do, and I forgot this time. Because hmm. I am persuasive, and the ghosts are real. Hmm. Yeah. Right, Devil but I, baby. <laughs> we, are we going to have a poll for... We're not going to have a poll for this episode, No, we right? will not have a poll for okay. this episode because we are not going to debate. Right. So we decided that we wanted to do our holiday special a little different than our usual episode. Last year, we restarted an old English tradition of telling ghost stories around Christmas. And in our last holiday special, we told three stories, and we didn't debate them at all. But this year, with Ghostly coming out on Christmas, we wanted to change it up just a little bit more. So Rebecca and I will each tell a ghost story, but to not bring everyone down at this time of the year, I wanted them to be about helpful spirits. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think so, too. And all of our ghost stories so far have been about hauntings, right? You know, is this person still haunting this area and spooking people? So those are really cool. But are there times when ghosts don't just exist to spook people? I think there are. Well, I don't think there's ghosts. But, I mean, (laughs) still, you know, yeah, there are other stories. Yeah. Where where they are helpful. Exactly. Now, they do meet tragic ends. Yes. Because they're ghosts. Right. But sometimes they're helpful. Again, this year, we will not debate these stories, as I'm sure you've had enough debating if you've spent time with your family and loved ones around the holidays. Oh, yes. (laughs) Oh, Rebecca, you've had some? I I have had that before. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I try to stay out of it, but it's hard sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Rebecca... Why don't you go first? All right. Well, I am going to talk about the legend of Big John in West Virginia. Wow, Big John. Big John. Mm. Um, so the book that this comes from is called The Telltale Lilac Bush. And it, there's chapters. This, this woman wrote this book, and she went around West Virginia, and she gathered all of the the tales and the folklore and mm-hmm. things going on in the state. And there are two chapters. There's a mine ghost, like, you know, like the seven dwarves mine. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like they belong to me. Right. No. Mines, like being in mines, because it's West Virginia, obviously, a lot of yeah. coal mining. Um, and then railroad ghosts as well. But we're going to focus on the uh, mine ghost story. Big Big John was in the mines. Uh, but it's just kind of interesting because those two chapters are uh, the mines and the railroad stories are all helpful ghosts. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and there's a lot of stories all over the world of helpful uh, go- ghosts that help miners mm. um when they're uh in the in the mines and uh, even from ukraine and i don't know just all all over the place uh, and but these I, aren't these aren't just like ancestors that we're talking about these are like ghosts that aren't linked to other people that are helping them right they're maybe linked to the mine yeah itself i mean i'm gonna be honest 
because they take place. It's, this takes place in a mine. You know, there's a little bit of um, scary because mm-hmm. it's a mine. Yeah, and a little bit of uh, violent because sure. it's it a takes mine. place in a mine. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, you know. Um, so I actually I have a picture of Big John that I'll not. I mean, not a photo, but oh. a drawing that someone did. Um, he's headless. Mm. because he had his head blown off with a stick of dynamite. I have no head. I have no head. Yeah, so not the headless horseman. The headless John. Headless big John. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyways, again, it's been it's been uh, around a long time, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting um, tradition of these kinds of stories. So um, obviously he was named Big John because his name was John, and he was big. Oh, okay. Just... Yeah. It wasn't like the opposite, like you call a big guy <laughs> tiny? Right. No, not that. He was big. Um, the story that I'm not going to read it verbatim, but there's a, it's from 1976. Jim Comstock wrote a version of this mm-hmm. tale that has been passed down. Um, so he was Russian. He was a Russian immigrant. There were a oh. lot of European immigrants. I thought he was in a hurry. <laughs> he was rushing. <laughs> he was Russian. He was Russian. Okay. Um, and there's actually in this town, Grant Town, um, there were a lot of European immigrants at okay. this time. So people from all over. Mm-hmm. So he was really good at explosives. Um, wait, but why? why well, wait, wait, like because he was Russian? He was I, good at explosives? Well, I, that's you. I, I didn't say that. You I don't, did. You just said that. Well, I'm just giving you information about okay, him. He okay. was Russian. He was also good at explosives. I don't <laughs> know that those are connected. That. So he was good at explosives. <laughs> <laughs> he was Russian, so he's good at explosives. <laughs> uh, he lived in a little shack near the mine. Um, unfortunately, though, because he was good at, uh, at the explosives, he was often given the task of doing the explosives. So one day he got careless and blew himself up. Wow. Yeah. So uh, he was dead. His head was blown off. Yeah, not so big anymore. Huh? No. So, uh, but not long after he died, uh, one of the miners came to work early went down into the mine in the a cage alone. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to say, reading the story, I don't know if we have, we know we have a lot of Chicago listeners and maybe other people that have visited Chicago and have gone to the Museum of Science and Industry. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, have you ever done the mine? Yeah, that cost extra. Right? Oh, well, when I was a kid, we used to go. I don't know if it cost extra then, but maybe There's like a did. part you could see that doesn't cost extra, but uh. then there's the part that cost extra. Yeah. So I have gone on it, just not as much as I've gone through the big heart Right. And all the other exhibits Which, there. Which, actually, Cheryl, she was on our, our episode for the Ouija board. Yes. Her father uh, helped paint the heart. Ooh, originally. wow. Originally, yes. Wow. Um, anyways, so the mine ride, If that I, that I just kept thinking about that this whole time because you do that. You get in yeah. like the cage, quote unquote, right? Mm-hmm. And you go down in the dark into the mine. Now, I know it's nothing like a, as scary as a real mine would be. Yeah. But basically, it's that. Well, so, for a little kid, it would be. Yeah, it was terrifying. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. So he went down and he thought he was alone, but uh, he was supposed to be alone. Um, but he kept hearing somebody breathe and grunt. And so he turned the light on and he saw a man with no head on his shoulders. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, I know a guy that got his head blown off. Uh huh. His name is Big John. Yep. And he could look through him, um, and he was holding the head, his head in his arms. Aww. I know. Um, and when he turned off his light, uh, or when he, t- he turned off his light, when he turned it back on, he was gone. Ooh. It's kind of crazy. So that was the first sighting mm-hmm. of Big John. So the other is that there, um, the miners were down in the mine. They saw a light in the distance coming from a pile of coal. And they turned around and heard a familiar voice and saw Big John motioning them to follow him. In one hand was his head. <laughs> he said, follow me. Uh, so he motioned and they did. Uh, and they did not know how they got to the opening, but somehow they did. They scrambled into the cage, um, pulled, the, uh, pulled the rope and came up. People on the surface were like, whoa, how did you guys get out? Like, I guess there had been a, a cave-in or a fire or mm-hmm. something. And they were shocked that they were able to get out, but Big John had led them out. So 
Um, wow, that's really helpful. Yeah. So for every, so supposedly after that, for a lot of years, um, flowers were placed on his gravestone every wow. year um, as the thanks for saving their lives. Wow. Yeah. So well, that's you go. definitely that's a helpful John. spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He saves miners' lives. And I guess there's, like I said, I think miners must have that in their soul where they they know it's such a dangerous job and that it's just a, like I said, that there's stories like this all over the world of miners, uh, their ghosts coming and helping their fellow yeah. miners out. Well, I know to do something like that, you have to be pretty superstitious. You know, you really have to trust your gut. Yeah. When it comes to doing a job like that, that's very, very dangerous. And yes. a lot of times I've heard stories of people trusting their gut in situations like that and bad things happening. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I wonder all the stories of people trusting their gut and things didn't happen. I don't I wouldn't hear those. So, yeah. But I mean, still, that's just it's amazing that stuff like that can happen. Definitely. So I am really excited to tell my story. By the way, Big John, awesome story. Thank you. I really liked it. Um, So it's well known that weird stuff seems to happen around natural disasters, right? Uh, Yeah. Like that animals can sense earthquakes and tornadoes. Yes. And that there have been warning signs sometimes of really bad things about to happen. Well, my story today is about something like that. It's about the gray man of Pauly Island. Ooh. Right? Is this aliens? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Maybe. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, Polly Island is in South Carolina. The Gray Man is known for warning the people of Polly Island of hurricanes that are about to touch land. Super handy. Yeah, and I watched a YouTube video during a hurricane where if they zoomed in enough, you see like a reflection of a man that was kind of gray the whole i mean the whole video was great but you kind of see that it was weird yeah well there you go so um people that have said that they have seen him really believe that they have seen him i I mean even though origins of when this gray man came to be are a little bit hard to pinpoint they don't need an origin story to say that this ghost saved their lives Mm -hmm. Uh, over the years There's been a couple possible stories of where he came from. There's actually four. I narrowed it down to two. Okay. um, Just because I really like these stories. Yeah. Um, But it could have just been the first first person to live on Polly Island. Um, So... It's it's not that great of a story, but the first person. Yeah, well, that's you know, obviously, you would feel an an ownership almost. Of Maybe, it, yeah. You know? I mean, not in a bad way, in a good way. But by the way, the last known sighting of this ghost was during Hurricane Florence. That was in 2018. Wow. So very recent. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, right. Um, most people believe that he was a young man that died in a devastating storm that made landfall around Charleston, South Carolina, on September 27th. 1822. So this is a really old story. Both of the possible origin stories are very old. Okay. Well, um, for for America. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not for the world. Yeah, yeah, like people in in Europe and everywhere else are like 1822, k. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like yesterday. Right. <laughs> so the story goes that there was a man that was aboard a ship for 2 years and he was desperately trying to get home to his fiance. Her family home was in Charleston. So as he was going, he saw that a storm was coming. So he decided to take a shortcut to the house. And this shortcut would take him across some marshy land. And as he and his servant rushed across the marshy land, the man slipped and fell into a bog and began sinking. Uh Oh, that's like my nightmare. Right? The servant tried to find anything that he could use to pull him out, but there was nothing, and soon the man perished. The servant went on to tell the family the horrible news. Days after the loss of her young lover, the man's fiance walked the beach to try to find some comfort for her, her horrific grief. She looked up to see him. He was on top of a dune. But he was telling her to leave, that the island was in great danger. Oh, wow. I wonder he, if you'd listen to that. Well, he disappeared. 
and she rushed home, and she was frantically telling her family that they all had to leave. She would not let up because of his warning. The father reluctantly packed up the entire family as he couldn't stop his daughter from begging him to leave. The next day a storm struck with a fury that would leave no one alive on the island. Except the ones that left. Yep. Wow. Yeah, right? That's, that's a good story. That's really good. This next one um, is kind of similar, but has a little bit of a twist to it. Okay. Uh, so another possible story of who this gray man might be is Enoch Arden. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, we're going to talk about that at the end. Okay. Um. Not to be skeptic, but just to put out any possible disclaimers that I have. Uh, In the early 1800s, Enoch Arden grew up with his two friends, one a girl and one a boy. They were his best friends, and they shared everything with each other. When they grew up, Enoch proposed to the girl, who was supposedly very beautiful. She accepted, and they were supposed to be married when Enoch returned from a trip that he had to take. The date that he was supposed to return came and went. She waited another two years for Enoch, but he didn't return. The town declared him lost at sea, which was basically like saying that he died somewhere out there. Mm. The other friend of Enoch and this woman confessed his love for her. Oh, of course. He was waiting in the wings. Yeah, well, he wasn't going to step on Enoch's yeah, thing, you know? okay. So they decided to get married. They picked a lovely afternoon to get married in front of a plantation house. I imagine it was, it was stunning. Yeah. As the services were taking place, they were interrupted by the sound of horse hooves. And they kept getting louder. The horsemen approached them finally. It was Enoch. Oh. He had finally returned after being stranded following a shipwreck. He started to dismount but realized what was happening, and, and so he spoke to the couple. But then he remounted and galloped away. He went to Polly Island and threw himself into the ocean. Jeez. The couple were horrified at this, at seeing Enoch. And hearing him talk and how distraught he was. And they threw themselves into a nearby river. Oh, geez, people. And none of the three survived. Oh, my gosh. Now, Enoch Arden was also a poem of a very similar topic. It had to do with him being married to the woman. Oh. And him going out to sea and being lost. And then he came back to find that she had remarried. Mm. I'm not sure if it was based off of the off of this Enoch story or not. Well, or like did the was the poem Yeah, which came first? Inspired, right, exactly. Yeah. But uh there is a law that gives people the right to remarry after a spouse has been missing for 7 years and it's called the Enoch Arden law. Well, then I'm guessing this is a true story. Maybe, we don't know. <laughs> uh in modern days though, we have equipment that can predict hurricanes fairly accurately. But the gray man first warned people in 1893. Mm. There's actually historic records of, of a warning. So was of a en- sighting. Was en- did Enoch this he's so people claim that he's the one that's coming back and warning people. Either about the Enoch or, or, the or the other, other guy. guy yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. Or the first resident of, of Polly. Gotcha. Or there was some other one that just didn't seem <laughs> didn't seem plausible it's at funny. all. Funny, at first me. I thought you were saying Pawnee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Parks and Rec. <laughs> that's what I think of. That's that's the reason why this story really rang out to me. Um, but you have to think that, you know, in 1893, the equipment wasn't as good to predict hurricanes. Oh, yeah. So this ghost saved many people's lives. Absolutely. It still is. 2018. 2018. He's still out there. He's still doing his thing. Wow. Uh, if you... If you YouTube, if you go on YouTube and you search for Ghost of of Polly Island, mm-hmm. I also think of a hey, like, hey Polly, ah. <laughs> hey Polly, Adrian's gonna stay at my house. <laughs> that was the worst Rocky I've ever done. Uh-oh. Hey yo, hey yo, Polly. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. I got gotcha. you. Um, so yeah, if you YouTube that, you will see the video that I'm talking about. It was 38 seconds long. 
Wow. Oh, I'm and, excited. I'll try to put a link up. Yeah. And the first like 10 seconds is it in actual time and with the camera zoomed out and then they zoom in a little bit more and you still don't see anything. And then they zoom in a little bit more and they draw this circle around. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. So I'm not going to debate that. Okay. I'm going to leave it as is. So that is our holiday special. Yeah. So I want to thank you so much for listening. The greatest gift that we've received over this last year is hearing from you. Knowing that someone is listening means so much to us. Uh, But it warms our hearts to have you comment about something that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Knowing that not only have you heard our voices, but actually listened to the words that we say. Hearing that some of you get excited and look forward to our next episode is just amazing. And that is a gift that you never think you'll ever receive, and you have given it to us in such an amazing way. Uh, This is our last show of 2019, and I'd like to take a second to reflect on what Ghostly has become. Because of all of you, we have had over 90,000 downloads of Ghostly. Woohoo! Isn't that crazy? That's really crazy. It's mind-blowing, actually. So when we first started... That number, uh, that that would have been a number that we couldn't even conceive of. Oh, no. Like, if you had asked me to predict yeah. how many listens or downloads we'd have by the end of the f- our, just over our first year, not even close. Or even how much we wished for. Right. You know, I wouldn't even have thought our first year we'd have 90,000 downloads. It's crazy. It, it's just so much. It's really, it's really something sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And our social media is growing, and it's so mind-blowing that we have conversations with you, that over the last year, we've gotten to know some of you because of this show, and and I'm just forever blown away and grateful for Ghostly for doing that. Yeah, me too. It's There's nothing more special than being able to share these amazing stories and history with other people that also like hearing about it and yeah. like to debate it in a fun way way that isn't hopefully mean or uncomfortable you know our goal is to to make these episodes fun but you know give you something to think about and that's all i ever push us you know a little bit which is is great i just want people to think think about what what it is and you know and if you still come up with it at the end that you believe that it's true you know i support you i don't believe it but i support you in, in that you've done your research and you've taken your time and you've thought of every possibility. Yeah. And again, we love hearing from you. And, you know, to definitely take a look at us on social media if you haven't yet, because there's a really good community yeah. getting formed out there. And I definitely and want we're all so supportive. Yeah. I mean, people actually wanted me to win a poll. I yeah. mean, could you believe that? <laughs> me. I can, because you're <laughs> very, very likable. No, 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 not <laughs> at all. Um, So that's it, pretty much. Yeah, uh, we wanted to keep this one short. Yeah, we want to keep it short because, I mean, it's Christmas. You should be spending time with your family. Yeah, but, you know, some good ghost stories are fun. Yeah. Share this with your family. Listen together and you then have could, a talk oh, about you it. You guys could open up presents while listening to this. Yeah. Hearing about Enoch Arden. There you go. Uh. We will be talking about tarot. Yeah, on the next episode that comes out on January 8th. 2020. I know, isn't that weird? So crazy. Oh, uh, also, too, um, you celebrated some significant day since our last episode, right? Yes, it was my birthday. It so was, thank you for birthday? all my, my birthday wishes Aww. on Ghostly. I appreciate it. What that did you do on your nice. birthday? Saw Star Wars, of course. I did too. Yes. Did you like it? <laughs> it was fun. I, yeah. I I did like it. I mean, it's a lot. I think I need to see it again. Like, there was a lot that happened. And there was no Baby Yoda in it. No, that that's the only downfall. But there is a new character that's uh, a different kind of cute. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. A cute spoiler alert. Yes. All right. So until January 8th, stay ghostly. Bye.